Hi friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about how to verify Kirchhoff's current law in any circuit. Okay, so that is the reason why we are taking the question that is verify Kirchhoff's current law in the following circuit. Okay, so we know that Kirchhoff's current law is always applied at nodes and uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law is always applied in the loops. Okay. So, if you want to verify Kirchhoff's current law in any circuit, we have to we have to assume. So, in the given circuit, how many nodes are there? Okay. For example, in this circuit, we have only one node which is available at this point. Okay. So, for example, this particular node, for this particular node, I am giving the number that is one. Okay. So now this is the node one we have in this particular circuit and if you want to verify Kirchhoff's current law first you need to know about the definition of KCL okay. So what is the definition of KCL it states that at any junction point the sum of incoming currents must be is equal to sum of outgoing currents it means for example this is the node we have and for this particular node we have three resistors connected like this for example this is r1 this one is r2 and this one is r3 for example the current which is flowing through the r1 is for example i1 and uh, the current which is flowing through r2 is i2 and the current which is flowing through r3 is i3 now at this particular junction point as per the definition of Kirchhoff's current law at any junction point it means for in this problem this is the junction now at this junction point the sum of incoming currents must be is equal to sum of outgoing currents it means for this junction point how many currents are incoming the incoming current is I1 is equal to how many currents are outgoing there are two currents one is I2 and one is I3. So these two currents are outgoing. That is the reason why I am taking sum of these two currents. Okay. Incoming current is only I1 in this particular problem and uh, outgoing currents are I2 and I3. That is the reason why we are writing the expression with the help of current direction at the junction point. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. That is that is the reason why in this particular given circuit now we have only one junction point that is one node point and if I am going to giving the names for this particular branch current is I1 and uh, here for example this is I2 and for example this one is I3. Now if you want to verify Kirchhoff's current law in this particular circuit you need to find the value of I1 again you need to find the value of I2 and I3. After getting all these currents, you need to apply KCL at this particular junction point and write down the expression I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. And after getting the expression, after writing the expression, what you need to do? You need to verify whether the value of incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing currents or not. Okay. If sum of incoming currents is equal to sum of outgoing currents, then Kirchhoff's current law is verified. For example, uh, 10 ampere is the incoming current to the junction point and uh, the the sum of I2 and I3 for example 9 amperes then incoming current is not going to equal with the outgoing currents then Kirchhoff's current lies not verified so that is the reason why you need to verify sorry you need to find the value of I1 I2 and I3 and uh, whenever you are applying Kirchhoff's current law at the junction point you will get directly the expression I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 okay so that is the reason why first we need to find I1 value and uh, if you know the value of I1 then only it is possible to find the value of I2 and I3 because I2, I3 are the currents which are divided from the current which is available at the junction point. So that is the reason why first we need to find the value of I1 and after finding the value of I1 you need to apply Kirchhoff's current, uh, sorry, current division rule in the R2 branch and in the R3 branch by using that current division rule you can directly find the value of I2 and I3 okay so after knowing all the values you can directly say that I1 must be is equal to I2 plus I3 if uh, I1 is not equal to I2 plus I3 then Kirchhoff's current law is not verified this is the actual procedure now 
first our target is to find the value of i1 and this i1 is supplied by 100 volts voltage source that is the reason why how much amount of current is supplied by this applied voltage if you want to find this total current i1 which is supplied by the voltage source first what we need to do we need to find the total resistance which is available in the original circuit if you know the value of total resistance in the circuit then you can directly find the value of total current supplied by the 100 volts voltage source so that is the reason why what we are doing we need to find the value of total we need to find the value of total resistance so total resistance that is rt so first we need to find the how what is the value of total resistance in the given circuit and uh, we know that whenever the source is present in the left side then we need to find the value of resistance always start from right side okay if if the source is present in the left side of a circuit if you want to find the total resistance in that particular circuit you always start reducing or you always start calculating the total resistance from right side okay so in this problem v is equal to 100 volts is present in the left side then we need to start reducing or we need to start calculating the total resistance from right side now if i am going to start from right side then R2, R3, both are connected in parallel. Okay, both are connected in parallel. So just see here, just uh, I am separately drawing the R2 and uh, R3, R2 and uh, R3 resistances like this. This is R3 and uh, this one is R2. And uh, we know that here, we know that this is the node point. Okay, so same whatever the connection is there between r2 and r3 same i have drawn here okay now r2 and r3 both are connected in parallel so we know that whenever we need to find the value of parallel combination of resistances you can directly find the total resistance of these parallel combination that is product of resistances divided by addition of resistances okay now here rt is equal to what is the value of r2 R2 is 2, R3 is 3 divided by 2 plus 3 that is equal to 2 into 3 means 6 divided by 2 plus 3 means 5. So here we know that 6 divided by 5 means 1.2. So here RT is equal to 1.2 ohms. Now we need to substitute this RT is equal to 1.2 ohms instead of what parallel combination of r2 and r3 so if i am going to substituting the value of total resistance rt is equal to 1.2 instead of parallel combination then circuit will becomes like this circuit will becomes like this just see here so this is the voltage source this one is the value of r1 and instead of parallel combination i am replacing with the value of total resistance is equal to 1.2 ohms and uh, this 1.2 ohm is the parallel combination of what r2 and r3 and this one is what 100 volts now after that step now see here after replacing rt instead of parallel combination now r1 and rt both are connected in series so that the total resistance is equal to r1 plus rt when the resistances are connected in series we can directly add do add two resistances so here r1 is 1 plus r2 e sorry rt is 1.2 ohms that is equal to 1 plus 1.2 means so 2.2 ohms now 2.2 ohms is the total resistance in the circuit okay total resistance in the circuit so this point this resistance is 2.2 ohms now we know that v is equal to 100 volts now we need to find the total current it so here total current is equal to total voltage divided by total resistance that is equal to 100 divided by 2.2 so here 100 divided by 2.2 if you are simplifying like this then you will get the value of total current it is equal to 45. 
45 amperes okay so 45.45 ampere is the total current supplied by what 100 volts voltage source now after getting this total current again i am redrawing the original circuit which is given initially because up to this calculation it represents the total current supplied by 100 volts voltage source that is the reason why we simplified or we calculated the total resistance after that we calculated the total current which is supplied by 100 volts voltage source okay now see here so v is equal to 100 volts is the value and just now we calculated the current supplied by this particular 100 volts is given by so so 45.45 amperes and this i1 we can also called as here total current because total current is equal to 45.45 amperes now this total current in the previous diagram if you observe just see here in the previous diagram if you observe i1 is the i1 is the just see here i1 is the total current supplied by voltage source so that is the reason why instead of it i am substituting or i am writing i1 so both are same only okay so that is the reason why it is equal to i1 is equal to 45.45 amperes okay so this is the value of current which is incoming to this particular junction point okay now now we know that how much amount of total current available at this particular junction point now we know that 45.45 ampere is the total current available at the junction point and from this junction point and for this junction point r2 and r3 two resistance branches are connected if two resistance branches are connected and uh, these two resistance branches are closed path then definitely current will flows through this r2 and uh, this r3 okay now we need to find the value of i2 and we need to find the value of i3 by applying current division rule okay so here again i am redrawing the original circuit like this again i am redrawing the original circuit like this just see here so this one so this one is the r1 value and uh, this is the r3 and uh, this one is the r2 value and uh, this one the current uh, this is i1 this one is i2 and here i3 now we know that at this junction point how much amount of current is available so current that is i1 is the incoming current to this junction point that is the reason why i1 is equal to 40 point 45.45 ampere is available now at the junction point now if you want to find if you want to find current i2 in this given circuit now what we need to do we need to find this i2 means by applying current division rule okay current division rule is always applied in the circuit when current is flowing through that particular resistance and this current is divided from the total current available at the junction point okay now we know that r2 and sorry i2 and i3 are the currents which are divided which are divided from the current available at the junction point that is the reason why if you want to find the value of i2 then we always use by using by using c d r c d r means current division rule so the formula given by okay so here i2 by using c d r is equal to so the formula is total current total current into opposite resistance opposite resistance opposite resistance divided by total resistance opposite resistance divided by total resistance now here total current represents the current available at the junction point opposite resistance it represents so from this junction point two currents are flowing outgoing okay two currents are outgoing that is i2 and i3 now if you are finding the value of i2 means definitely r3 is the opposite resistance why because i2 is dividing from the current available at the junction point and which is flowing through r2 and i3 is also 
current which is flowing through R3 and which is divided from the current available at the junction point. That is the reason why we need to consider the branches only the current which is divided from the total current available at the junction point. We need to, we need to consider only those branches of resistances and uh, when the currents which are divided from the junction point. Okay, simply we can say that what? In which branches, okay, in which branches the current is divided from the junction point which is flowing? Okay, simply we can say that what? From this junction point, from this junction point, the current available is 45.45 ampere. And this from this 45.45 ampere, in how many branches this total current is divided, we need to consider only those particular branches resistance only. So that is the reason why if you are finding the value of I2 means in another branch, some amount of current is flowing from the total current available at the junction point. That is the reason why we need to consider only R3. Okay. If you are finding the value of I2 means we need to consider the value of R3 is opposite. If you are finding the value of I3 means we need to consider the R2 is the opposite. Okay. So that is the reason why we are finding the value of current I2 in R2 branch means the total current available at the junction point is 45.45 into opposite resistance means now we need to consider only R3. Now we know that R3 is how much actually R3 value is R3 value is 3 ohms divided by total resistance. Total resistance means we need to consider the value of resistances only the divided current which is flowing through it. Okay. So that is the reason why. So R2 plus R3. So we need to add these two directly. So here 45.45 into 3 divided by 2 plus 3 that is equal to that is equal to so by simplifying by simplifying that is 45.45 into 3 divided by 5 it will gives the value of 27.27 amperes of current so this current is the value of current i2 by using cdr okay this point is clear. Now we know the value of I2 which is divided from the total current available at the junction point. Now another point that is what? We need to find the value of I3 which is also divided from the current which is available at the junction point. So that is the reason why again I am drawing the original circuit for finding the value of I3 which is flowing through the value of what? R3. Now see here. Now we are finding the value of current which is flowing through R3. This is R3, this one is R2 and this one is R1. V is equal to 100 volts. Now we need to find the value of I3 and this is the I2. Now if we are finding the value of current I3 by using current division rule, now always the opposite resistance is what? R2 only. Okay. So now that is the reason why. Now we know that 45.45 ampere is the current available at the junction point. Now, by using by using current division rule, by using current division rule, we are finding the value of I3 by using CDR. So we know that total current. Now total current available at the junction point is how much? 45.45 into. Now opposite resistance is what? We are calculating the value of I3 means opposite resistance is what? R2. So here R2 divided by so R2 plus R3 because in these two branches only the divided current is flowing. So that is the reason why so 45.45 into R2 R2 is how much now R2 is 2 ohms divided by R2 means 2 ohms R3 means 3 ohms. Now by simplifying this one you will get the value of 45.45 into 2 divided by 2 plus 3 means 5. So by simplifying you will get the value of current as 18.18 amperes. Now this is the value of I3. Okay. This is the value of I3. Now we need to verify Kirchhoff's current law at the junction point. Okay. Now to verify the Kirchhoff's current law at the junction point in the original circuit. So what we need to do? 
So I1 is the incoming current for the junction point is equal to I2 plus I3 are the outgoing current from the junction point. Now we know that I1 is what? I1 is 45.45 45 ampere. Now I2 is how much? I2 is a previous step. We have the value of I2 in the previous step. That is what? I2 is equal to 27.27 amperes. Okay. So here 27.27 ampere is the I2 value. So that is the reason why. So 27.27 and I3. I3 is how much here? I3 is 18.18 .18 amperes. Now if I am going to adding 27.27 plus 18.18 if I am adding then you will get the value of 45.45 it means what incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing currents it means incoming current is equal to sum of outgoing currents so here KCL at a node in given circuit in given circuit is verified okay verified like this we need to verify Kirchhoff's current law in any circuit and at any node point thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe my channel for more updates thank you